This video explores constructions in Geometer Sketchpad, which are which is possibly the most important feature that you'll use most often when you use Geometer Sketchpad to create geometric demonstrations. Let's demonstrate how constructions work by creating a square. Now, when we say we want to create a square, we want to be very specific about what we mean. What we don't mean is that we simply want to create an object that looks sort of square-like which I can do here just using freehand with the segment tool. So that's approximately a square, but it's not really exactly a square. And the problem is that if I want to investigate properties of squares, I don't just want to look at one square, I want to look at lots and lots of squares. And if I try to make this be a bigger square, well, I can't really do that by dragging the points around because now it's clearly not going to be a square anymore. So with Geometer Sketchpad, we will be able to create a square that we can drag around and stretch and shrink, and it will always retain that essential property of being a square. So let's see what that looks like. So let's delete this. To start off, we're just going to simply draw a line segment. So this line segment is going to be one of the four sides of our square. And now, in order to create the other sides of our square, we need to think about the essential properties of squares. And one of the essential properties is that they have four right angles. So what we really want to do is construct a right angle. We want to create an angle that is always going to be 90 degrees, no matter what. And the way that we can do that is using the Construct menu. So under the Construct menu, one of the options is Perpendicular Line. But of course it's grayed out, because just like measurements, constructions have prerequisites. The prerequisite for a perpendicular line is that we need to have a straight object selected, like this line segment. And we also have to have a point selected. And what's going to get constructed is a line that's perpendicular to the line that we selected and goes through the point we selected. So now if I go to the Construct menu, Perpendicular Line is now available, and if I click that, I get the, the perpendicular line I'm looking for. So this angle here is a 90 degree angle. In case we were wondering about that, we could measure it. Remember, to measure an angle, we need three points, so I'm going to add a point there. And I'm going to measure these three points. And when I select those three points and click the angle option, I get that the measure of angle ABC is 90 degrees. And notice that as I move this point around, that measurement does not change. It's always going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so that's one of the pieces that we need for our square. Another important feature of a square, though, is that all four sides of a square have the same length. And this side AB is not the same length as the side BC. And again, I could move the point A so that it looks like it's pretty close to be the right length, but it's not going to be fixed there. It's not going to be set to be rigidly the same distance away. I will always be able to move this point A wherever I want, and so the, the, the figure that I get will not always be a square. So that point A is not actually useful for us. It was just useful for us to test that the measurement is a right angle. So let's actually delete that point A. So what we really want is a point up here that is forced to be the same distance away from B as it is from C. And you might be wondering how we're going to do that, but the way we're going to do it is by using circles. So if I create a circle that's centered at B and goes through C, well then I get an intersection point up here, which I can plot simply by using the point tool. When I use the point tool, if I have both of those uh, objects, the circle and the line selected, and I click the point, and that point is going to be defined to be the intersection of those two objects. So notice that it's forced to be on the circle and also on the line. And these two distances, the distance from B to C, which I can measure using my measure menu, and the distance from B to this as of yet unnamed point, Geometer Sketchpad is going to call that D, so the distance from B to C is equal to the distance from B to D, and again that relationship stays the same Notice that as I move this point around, the distances are staying equal, no matter how I move the point C around, or the point B for that matter. The distances are going to be the same. So this angle is always going to be a right angle, and these two distances are always going to be the same. And so we're well on our way to creating a square. But we need more right angles and more equal distances. So we can do this again using the Construct menu. So I want another perpendicular line. This time I want something that's perpendicular to BD and goes through point D. And I can get that using the Construct menu, so perpendicular line. I can get the fourth point up here in a couple of different ways. I could draw another circle, but probably it's a little bit easier to do another construction. So let's select BC and point C, and we'll construct another perpendicular line. And now this point of intersection up here, which again I can create using the Point tool, I go to where both lines are highlighted, 
and I plot that point there. So now that point will be the intersection of those two points. Let me use my labeling tool to give it a name. And now I've got a square. So B, C, E, D, that quadrilateral there, is in fact going to be a square, no matter how I move these points around. And because of the parent-child relationship, some of the points have the ability to change the size of the square, and some don't. But we have a bunch of junk on the screen now. We've got this circle, we've got all these lines that go off infinitely in both directions. I just want a square. I just want the four line segments. So let's start hiding some of these extra pieces that we don't want. Let's select the circle, and under the display menu, we'll select hide circle. Again, we don't want to delete the circle because we needed the circle to create that point D. And we needed point D to create point E and so on. So again, the parent-child relationship is several layers deep in this sketch. Let's hide these lines that go on forever. Now notice that when I select the line that connects D to E, I'm selecting the entire line. And if I hide it, I'm including that I'm hiding the part that connects D to E. So I'll have to actually draw that part again using the segment tool. Similarly, I can select these two lines and hide them. But again, I'm missing the parts now between B and D and between E and C, but I can redraw those using the segment tool. And now what I have is, in fact, a square. And again, we can verify that. Let's measure the other two lengths. So what haven't we measured yet? D to E, let's measure that. And E to C we have not measured yet, so let's do that. Let's measure our four angles. So again, we have to select three points in order. That was the angle at B. Let's measure the angle at C. Let's measure the angle at E. Select C, E, and D. And then finally, select E, D, and B, and measure that. Let's get our square out of the way here underneath all our measurements. But what we're seeing is that all four sides are the same length and all four angles are right angles. No matter how I move this around, that relationship is always going to stay the same. If I were using this for an educational purpose, I might even want to mark up my square to show that. So using my marker tool, I might want to show that all four sides are the same length. So I put a tick mark on each of the four sides. I might even want to show that these angles are right angles. And the nice thing about Geometer Sketchpad is that it knows that when you have perpendicular lines that we use a different symbol for that angle marker and so it'll give you that little right angle symbol there when you have a right angle. And so this is a nice visual way to indicate that what we have here is a square. And again that's going to stay the same no matter how we drag this around. So there are a lot more constructions that I haven't talked about but they all have prerequisites. You can figure those out by playing around with it or you can go into the help files. If you say under help under the Reference Center, go to Menus, and you want to click on the Construct menu, and under the Construct menu it gives you each of the commands and each of the prerequisites. So these are useful for constructing midpoints, parallel lines, angle bisectors, circles, and so on. So constructions are going to be something that you're going to use a lot when you use Geometer Sketchpad. If you really want to do anything useful with Sketchpad, it's almost always going to require you to use constructions. So take some time to play with constructions, build some squares or parallelograms or rectangles, anything like that, to try to practice with this, these ideas that we've talked about in this video.